Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Iconic, and this is my first of many videos in making organic chemistry simple. Basically, the reason why I decided to make these videos is because before I took OrgoChem, every single person that I spoke to, they gave, they scared the shit out of me. They told me, "Oh, OrgoChem is very, very, very hard," and that's something that I really, really didn't like. Because now that I have actually finished the class, what I concluded is the class is actually very simple. Only if you have somebody that explains it to you properly and that's exactly what I plan on doing in this video and of course all other videos so let's get right into let's get right into it <clears throat> before we can actually go into the organic chemistry itself first and foremost we have to there are certain things from gen chem that you will we have to recall that you have to be able to do in order to do the first couple of things in organic chemistry um, and like I said, some of these things, you know, most of these things are gonna be a review. They're gonna be a review for you guys, and they're not even, you know, you should already have learned this from Gen Chem. But these are key things that you're going to need to, you know, have already mastered down by now. So let's get right into it. First and foremost, <coughs> you should know the difference between polar and nonpolar molecules. Nonpolar molecules, you know, and this. <coughs> Polarity, this is something that there's so many different videos, you know, I'm, I'm guessing your professors have much talked a lot about it, so I don't want to really, you know, get much into it, but basically, if I were to give you, say, I don't know, CCl4, you should know, you should know why this is a nonpolar molecule, versus if I give you, let's say, C, CH3, and why this one, is actually a polar molecule so <clears throat> you know polarity in, in orgo in orgo chem they don't talk about it much but you know you should you should already know how to do this and stuff so it's, it wasn't it's not that very important but this is something you know it should be second nature for you now the next thing that we're going to talk about is formal charge and this is something that i will go over why because it comes it comes up a lot in orgo chem so <clears throat> basically what is formal charge formal charge it, you know like i said this is going to be a review for you guys so if you know it that's really good if not then this will be really really good for you to understand it so basically what is formal charge formal charge just refers to the charge an atom in a molecule so say for example you have water right formal charge we would ask ourselves okay what is the charge on this oxygen or what is the charge on this hydrogen or whatever and in your books, there is um, <clears throat> the teacher. They teach you a different way, different different ways of finding what is that formal charge. And basically, I have a really really easy way of going about doing it. So here's this formula. I highly recommend that you guys memorize this. So formal charge is going to be equal to valence electrons minus lines plus dots. Now I know what you're thinking. What the hell? What do you mean lines plus dots? This thing probably sounds very sounds very stupid, but when you actually see it, it's going to be very very simple. So if you refer to your periodic table, you'll know that oxygen has <coughs> oxygen. It's in the sixth group, and it has a it has valence electrons. It has six valence electrons. And how do I go about finding that? Um, this is something you should know, already know how to. Um, this is something you should already know. So, valence electrons minus lines plus dots. So, if I were to ask you, what is the formal charge on oxygen? This is how you would do it. Right? Fc formal charge equals valence electrons. How many valence electrons does oxygen does oxygen have? Six. Right? Minus lines plus dots. And th the lines is. How many lines are on the oxygen? Well, clearly you can see there's one, two. In other words, bonds, but this sound, this makes it very simple. So there's, you can see there is two lines on the oxygen. Now, how many, how many dots, right? One, two, three, four. So two plus four is six, right? Right there, that gives you zero. So the formal charge on oxygen is zero. Very simple. If you use this, if you use this formula, you can literally, you know, it, it, it works all the time. So let's say, for example, 
what is the form what is the formal charge on this carbon ch3 c triple bond oh all right now go ahead you guys pause the video and try to figure out what is the formal charge on that oxygen that i pointed to figure out what is the formal charge on this oxygen go ahead pause the video right now and try to figure it out all right, so I'm assuming that you guys actually paused it and tried it out, but now I'm going to actually solve it. So, <clears throat> again, oxygen, it has how many valence electrons? It has six, right? Now, lines. How many lines are connected to the oxygen? One, two, three, right? Three lines. Now, how many dots are connected to that oxygen? I mean, how many dots are on that oxygen? One, two, three plus two is five. Six minus five gives you what? one and this one is of course it's a it's a plus one so right there and then you tell yourself okay this oxygen has a plus one formal charge so this this trick of valence electrons minus uh valence electrons minus lines plus dots it works all the time and for orgo chem the three main atoms that you're gonna need to know how to do the formal charge for is always is gonna be carbon nitrogen and oxygen so these these ones they always come up and you, you should be able to eventually you have to get to a point where you can just look at it and be like okay it's a plus one charge it's a minus one charge or whatever but basically yeah memorize this formula valence, valence electrons minus lines plus dots all right now the next thing that's that's review from gen chem is going to be let's see um resonance structures know the different types know how to do resonance structures and whatnot this um, resonance i want to <coughs> resonance structures you know they covered a lot in gen chem you should know how to do different types of resonance structures it does come up a lot in orgo chem there's uh many videos that already explain how to do it and whatnot so i don't want to make this video longer than it already is but the next thing that I do want I do want to talk about I do want to show you guys how to do it is atomic orbitals atomic orbitals so basically what atomic orbitals refer to is like in a molecule when you have you know certain certain atoms bonding to another thing let's just say I don't know let me give you a molecule C double bonded right here and for example right here so for these, all these bonds to be formed, right? For this carbon-carbon bond, for this carbon-hydrogen bond, and so on, right? There's electrons. You should know that there's um, these bonds are what literally two electrons, and they're coming together like this. Let me show you. You can imagine like here this carbon-carbon bond. You can imagine it's like this. There's where well, one electron, and there's another electron from this carbon. And each carbon they have um, they have orbitals like this. And this, in reality, this how this bond is li literally. This is what's exactly what happened. It's like two electrons. They're sharing their electron clouds, but that's not important. What's important is how do I, you know, how do I say okay? What kind of what kind of orbital, what kind of orbital is between this carbon carbon bond or this carbon hydrogen bond? And instead of explaining okay, what does this mean and stuff? Because you're not really gonna, you're not really required to know how to, you know okay what does this orbital mean and whatnot but really you're going to require okay is this a sp1 sp2 sp3 or whatever S these things that i'm mentioning to you these are ways of defining okay what is this bond what is this bond between these two atoms so here's the really easy trick to go about doing this right a bond between any two atoms it's going to be either sp sp2 or sp3 right and basically what this what was this says you can imagine like this oh i forgot to write a two right here my bad so a quick way a very easy way to go about doing this is imagine like this whenever you see this imagine there's a one right here and there's a one right here so this total this is two whenever you have an atom that's bonded let's say you have a carbon and that's bond let's say you have a Let's just okay let me write this let's say you have a carbon that's bonded to two other different atoms right you're gonna that's gonna be a sp right because you have one two right there 
So this this carbon, this carbon has a sp bonding, right? Now let's say if I have add another one hydrogen. Now this carbon has three things attached to it. So this will be a sp two because like I told you, imagine there's like a one right here. So one plus two is three, right? So this is sp two. Now you can get this for yourself. If there's three, four things bonded to it, this is a sp three. Now what if I were to ask you this, right? Let me give you an example. Let's say this. You have carbon, hydrogen, 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 bonded to another carbon, bonded to an oxygen, and bonded to a hydrogen. Okay. Between, now my question to you guys is, between this carbon and this carbon, what are the atomic orbitals? Right? Is it sp2 versus sp and sp3 or whatever? So, like I said, very simple. Let's look at this carbon first, right? This carbon is bonded to how many other atoms? One, two, three, four. Therefore, this is going to be sp3, right? Because there's four things in this, you know, like I said, there's one right there. So this, is, this carbon is bonded to four things. Now, what about this other carbon? This carbon bonded to this carbon, right? This hydrogen and this oxygen. Yes, even though it's a double bond, that doesn't matter because why? It's only bonded to that oxygen. So there's three things bonded to it, right? So that will become sp2. And you can literally, this trick of, you know, just counting how many atoms are bonded to it, it works all the time. So you guys, that's it for the first video of <coughs> of trying to simplify Oracle Camp for you guys, making it easy. Um, if you have any questions, comments, just leave it, uh, leave it in the comment section below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.